Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. There's a consequence engine that operates from God against Christians who won't repent. Chastening is how God trains us for righteousness. You say, how do you know that? Well, look at Hebrews chapter 12. I'm glad you asked me. How do you know that? And you know, whenever someone asks you, how do you know that? Show them. That's what you're here for. You're supposed to be learning where to go. I'm showing you where to go for all these topics that are the most important topics of your Christian life. For the rest of your life, till you get to heaven, it's going to matter how well you know this truth. Because when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. And the truth allows you to abound and overflow with the truth of God and the life he wants us to live. Well, starting in verse, um, let's see, 5 of Hebrews 12. You've forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. My son, this is talking about Christians. The Lord is chastening Christians, rebuking Christians. Verse 6, for, when the Lord, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son he receives. Doesn't, I mean, that is not the, um, you know, your best life now, positive thinking Joel Olstein. I don't think you'll hear him ever speak on this. You don't even know who he is. He's got that gigantic church down in, I think it's in Houston, that only stresses the positive. This, this is what is destroying people's lives and marriages and families. It's because they can't understand why their life is like the wheels have fallen off and everything is going bad and they can't get along with their parents or their wife or their husband or their boss and their whole life's falling apart and they're a Christian and they think, maybe if I memorize another verse or something. No. Look what it says. If you endure chastening, verse 7, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not chasten? Have you noticed how many times the word chasten Actually, if you could see my Bible, I have a little circle around all the chastening. I've daisy-chained them so you can see it. That's one of the ways I study the Bible. If God repeats himself after about the second repetition, I go, what are you doing saying that so many times? And I start thinking about it more. Uh, For what son is there, verse 7, whom the father does not chasten? Verse 8, but if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. I remember when I used to have my old King James Bible. The old one, this is a new King James. There was a swear word in the Bible. Did you know that? The old King James has a swear word in it. You know what it says in verse 8? In the old King James, it says, you are bastards. I, I used to remember seeing the old men sitting around chewing tobacco and spitting it out, talking about that bastard, you know. That, that, that was a, a disparaging term. Do you know what it, this is a very serious passage. God says, if you are without chastening, verse 8, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not a son. Oh. If you call yourself a Christian and can live persistently in either secret or even unsecret public sins and nothing happens, God says you're illegitimate. What does that mean? That means he's not your father. That's what an illegitimate child is one that that nobody knows who the father is. That's what they used to call them. You know, they're born out of wedlock and they're illegitimate. It was, you know, a cultural thing, you know, that everybody frowned. What, What is this saying? That there are actually people. It says in Matthew chapter 7, who are going to get to heaven and they're standing in line. He says, Lord, we did all these wonderful things. We were in your church and we served. And he says, yeah, you did that, but I never knew you. Depart from me. Why? You worker of iniquity. You were never chastened. You were never stopped dead in your tracks. You were never spanked by me, the God of the universe. I spank all my children. If you're a Christian, you're cruising along and you've got all this secret stuff going on and it's clearly sin from the Bible, and nothing happens to your life, you are cruising the wrong direction, and you're going to end up horrified with the worst thing you could ever hear in your life. I never knew you. That's what Jesus said. 
So keep going. Uh, verse 9, furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more be readily in subjection to the Father's spirits and live? For if indeed for a few days chastening, as it seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Verse 11, chastening seems to be joyful. No chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit. Wow. What is chastening, by the way? Chastening is something we feel as emotional anxiety or distress. What used to bring us joy doesn't. Pressures increase at work, at home, in our health, in our finances. Many Christians bump along at this chastening level of discipline, yet fail to read the signs. They feel unfulfilled at church. They feel critical of their Christian friends. They feel on the outs with God. When they pick up their Bible, it's like lead. Sometimes they just don't even want to pick it up. Their relationships with the Lord seems blighted. Chastening is when God removes from us the joy of our salvation. And if any of these symptoms sound familiar, you don't need to go church a little more. You don't need to read the Bible a little bit more with a better attitude. You need to look for any ongoing sin in your life and repent. Because if we don't, it gets worse. 